Hey folks, Ken MacArthur here, best-selling author of Impact, How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions, and Make a Difference in a Noisy World, and you're listening to the, uh, <laughs> the, the broadcast that we're doing here today with Don Crowther. Don is an amazing guy. You're about to be impressed. I know I am every time I listen to him, and I've been listening to him for a long, long time. Uh, he's got quite a history, and his history comes with the idea of actually doing things. You know, so many people talk about social media. I don't know what it takes to be qualified uh, as a social media expert these days. Uh, a lot of people have a really free definition of that. But uh, Don teaches from experience, not just theory. Don's teachings come from decades in the trenches uh, having experiences, building incremental sales and profits. Uh, he was the founder of five successful companies, developer and webmaster of over 250 quality websites, the marketing manager for some of the world's most successful brands at marketing powerhouses like uh, Kimberly Clark, Conagra, and S.C. Johnson. Uh, he is uh, uh, a marketing strategy and ethics instructor for the world's largest accredited online university, author of three books, hundreds of published articles, uh, the holder of university degrees in marketing and humanities, and a master's degree in business uh, from uh, the University of uh, Virginia's Darton School of Business. Publisher of several popular newsletters, dozens of e-books, CDs, and other products, Welcome to the show today, Don. How are you doing? I am doing great. Wow, I haven't heard an introduction like that in quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds pretty impressive, uh, and I think it's pretty impressive that you've survived this long. So, uh, yeah, well, you know, there, when you're certifiably unemployable, <laughs> you have to survive. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, and we take it a day at a time, and things uh, in social media are changing all the time. I'm really looking forward to your uh, presentation today. It's called Kicking Your Social Media Success to a Whole New Level, and I think we all need to do that because social media is a really important thing these days. Yep, and so what I would like to do, Ken, is I would like to have a conversation between me, you, and the people on the line. Fantastic. So what I'd like to encourage people to do is anytime you have a question, throw it into that question box. If we don't handle it immediately, we'll take it as we go as we get along towards the end. Is that all right? Yep. That works okay, great. Okay, what I what I would like to do is I sat down this morning and I said, Okay, Ken's group is a pretty amazing group of people. Um, they are not newbies online. They have, even though I realize there are a few newbies here, most of you have some time and some energy under your belt. And so what I decided to do was to not just talk about the basics of social media and those kinds of things. What I decided to do was to say, okay, wherever you are in social media, what I want to do is to kick your social media success to a whole new level. And so I sat down, and usually when I do a presentation, it's really well thought out with a carefully set up agenda, those kinds of things. And this time, I just threw some things that have been on my mind that I've been testing lately and looking at into a presentation. So this isn't going to flow real well, but what it is going to do is I'm going to show you some things that are working really well right now and teach you some strategies you can start using today to start making some more money online. That sound okay, Ken? That sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm really eager uh, to to listen to this. Well, as an alternative, we could just sit around and be boring all all this presentation <laughs> if you want. No, let's be exciting. Let's uh, let's okay. take them up a notch. All right, good. Okay, so what I would like to do is to ask you to tell me what are the two most effective sites, social media sites in terms of driving sales. Uh, okay? Is this so, a test, Don? <laughs> this is a test. And I'd like all the, all the people in the audience to just give me, just say, one and two, what are the two most effective sites in terms of driving sales? So type it there in the, in the uh, question area there. Is that what you're saying? Yep. All right. 
Okay, so I've got some votes. I've got Facebook, Google. I've got Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Ken, you want to weigh in? What do you think it is? <laughs> I can put you on the spot, too. Uh, yeah, I was, I was hoping you wouldn't do that. You know, what I, I'm thinking that, that it really depends on you, your products, and, and your services, and the market that you're trying to reach. Okay, that's a good weasel. <laughs> and yes, it does, because if you're a pure business to business, then LinkedIn rises above some of the other sites, those kinds of things. And so you're absolutely right. But overall, when you really look at, at all the data, what are the two that show up as highest? Okay, here we're going to, let me tell you what they are. They are, number one, Pinterest. Pinterest does a high, has a higher selling percentage than any other uh, social media site. So let me tell you a little bit about Pinterest here for just a moment. I hope anyone here not know Pinterest. And don't I won't I won't make fun of you or anything else like that. I just need to know where we are in terms of Pinterest. Now, okay, so Pinterest is the number three social media site out there. And if you want to, and for, since no one answered that they didn't know anything about Pinterest, let me just describe Pinterest here for just one moment. Uh, I'll throw this over here. And for those of you who have never been there, it's a place where, um, let me pull back this back up. Okay, I am logged in. Okay, so what ha what it is is pictures, and then people can put comments and things down and like it and those kinds of things, and they can share it with different boards and those. And there's lots and lots of different things that happen on Pinterest. So Pinterest accounts are absolutely free, and you absolutely need to do this. Uh, big brands are are using it. Small people. <laughs> don't mean short people, small <laughs> companies are using this and they're doing some amazing things with Pinterest. And so let me show you a couple of things about Pinterest that you really need to understand. The first one is, when you, when, is that it helps to understand the mindset between Pinterest and other sites. And that mindset is that with, it, it helps best to compare it to Facebook. So when you compare it to Facebook, Facebook is a place where, if we want to be really blunt about it, Facebook is a place where people build networks of friends. And so what they're doing is they're really collecting friends. And then they're talking about oh, pictures of their grandkids. They're putting up, they're planning where they're going to go out uh, on Friday night. They're putting pictures up of uh, drunken activities of their friends, all those kinds of things. And so Facebook is primarily built around friends. And so if we as marketers want to get in there and sell something, what we have to do is interrupt the conversation about friends kinds of things and get them to pay attention to our interruptive advertising that is trying to get them to go spend money. That does work, and there are some amazing things you can do on Facebook to do that. But when it really comes down to it, Facebook is not one of the top two in terms of driving sales. Mm. So what Pinterest is, is a place where people talk about things that they're passionate about. So they're, and, and, and some of those things that they're passionate about are things they want to buy. And that's why it's so important is to recognize that people on Pinterest are talking about things they're passionate about. Sometimes it's, it's okay, here's a list of top 20 blog posts. Here's quotations. Um, here's, a, okay, here's something that's cute, a black velvet dress. Okay, that's something that somebody may want to be buying. Here's some crafts. Here's a food, okay, something they may want to buy as they go out to a restaurant. Here is a heartfelt creations. So something they would buy. And by the way, one of the things that, that I have discovered is I actually use Pinterest for buying wedding gifts and Christmas gifts and things like that. I go to people's Pinterest boards and I go to and I go look in their board and for stuff that they want and I go buy it for them. 
and it's really worked out well. I've had several people, I, 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 one of the leading internet marketers out there went to his wedding, went to his Pinterest board, grabbed, uh, grabbed something off his Pinterest board, and his, uh, he came up to me afterwards and he said, Don, I got all these great gifts from everybody, but you're the only one who really gave me something I wanted. Mm -hmm. And it really comes from this piece about people sharing stuff they're passionate about, and some of those things are things that they are passionate about buying. Another thing about Pinterest is that, is that other sites are all about the conversation. Pinterest is all about sharing the pictures. And so there's not a huge fear of people coming in and, and nailing you for putting something up. You know, I actually have a wedding board. Why? Because my daughter was getting wet, married, and so I was sharing ideas back and forth with her in that particular process. And yeah, people can make fun of me, Don Crowther having a wedding board. Well, guess what? I had one for a really good reason, because that was something I was passionate about at that particular moment of time. Mm -hmm. And so, and when you look at it, when you look at the data, Pinterest gives the highest dollars per order. So if you look at this, Pinterest gives $80 per average order. That's higher than Google and Amazon and Yahoo and Bing and double those from Facebook more than YouTube more than Vimeo more than Twitter mm. so what this is doing is when people come from Pinterest they're more likely to spend more money on your site and what you'll notice when you spend some time on Pinterest is that the big places like Nordstrom's and Macy's and Bed Bath and & Beyond and, and, and other sites like that, if you go look at their data, what they're telling us is they sell more from Pinterest than any other place out there. So if you're not doing anything on Pinterest, you definitely should be. Now, some people say, well, I hear it's all women. Well, guess what? Women happen to make up just somewhere right around 50% of the population. And if, even if you sell stuff that primarily men buy, well, think about it this way. Women oftentimes buy things for the men in their lives. Another thing, women are oftentimes the gatekeepers where a man has to get approval from the woman before he can buy that. I worked with one of the largest boating sites online, which is now the largest boating site online, and one of the things that we found out is that women have a veto power over a man buying a boat or spending a lot of money on anything boating related. And so Consequently, hey, if I was a boating company, I would definitely be putting things up on Pinterest so that the women in the lives of the men would be seeing them, seeing those things and saying to the man who's really wanting to buy the boat, why don't you look at these boats? Yeah. It also does some amazing things in terms of SEO. Let me show you a strategy. I started teaching this strategy two years ago. And there are so many people who still have not done this strategy that I'm going to show it to you. And another thing that's really important to recognize is that this strategy I'm going to teach you right now has done amazing things. It is not uncommon to see this strategy showing up on the first page of Google and in many cases number one spot on Google just by doing this strategy. Mm. So what I'd, all like you to, what I'd like all of you to do, we're going to do a little exercise here for a moment. I would like you to take out a piece of paper or open up a Word doc or something like that, and I would like you to write five, uh, eventually I want you to write 50 tips that pertain to your business, but for right now I want you to write five. Okay, so just write five things that people need to know or want to know about your business in tip format. Okay, do that. Uh, I would sing to you, da, 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 da. but I, sh I won't because I don't want to really gross you out. So go ahead. We're going to take about one minute here, and I want you to write five tips. Okay, about 20 seconds. I'm really hoping you're doing this exercise. One of you is going to get a little fame here.
Thanks, Ruth, for asking me to slow down, but I don't slow down well. <laughs> I, I, I know that, uh, that the, uh, the recording of this will be available, so you can go back and watch it again, okay? Uh, but I, I just don't do well slow. Okay, so who has a tip that they would like to share with us? And, w and I will show you how you use that tip in just a moment. Now, don't everybody raise your hand at the same time. Come on. <laughs> Type something in there, folks. Uh, you've got to have a tip for your business, right? So, IT Solutions, JT. Okay, so JT, let's use one of your tips, okay? So, JT, if you would type that tip into the box and also the URL. So, I need a headline, I need a URL, and I need your tip, okay? So, Meanwhile, I'll be showing you all what we're going to do here. So what you do is you then turn those tips into pictures. So you can either hire it out or you can do it yourself. And I'm going to show you a way to do it yourself in just a moment. And then what you, what you want to do is you're going to write a blog post about that tip. And then you pin the picture from the blog post. So what you do is you write 50 tips, you take each one of them, turn it into a picture, then you write a blog post about that tip, put the tip on the blog post, and then pin the picture from that blog post. So JT, have you got a tip for us, or should we use Jeanette's? Okay. Ken, I want yes. you to come up give me a tip. <laughs> okay? Okay. Um, my tip is that um, there are three things you need to make money on the Internet. Uh, you need an audience. You need a product or service to sell. And you need a conversion. Okay. So what I'm doing is I am in Word. Uh, excuse me. I am in, what is this called? PowerPoint. There you and go. And I'm going to create a new PowerPoint. I'm demonstrating because most of you have PowerPoint. Okay, all right. So what I'm going that to do? A tool for creating graphics too. Oh, and I'm, that's what I'm showing you right here. <laughs> so we're going to go to design, and we're going to make it be portrait because Pinterest works better vertical with vertical pictures. Okay. Now I have all these design looks, and how I got them was I went to Microsoft.com and I went to the to the download page for pin for uh, PowerPoint and I downloaded a bunch of different looks and so let's choose one of these that might look sort of cool how about how about this one now nah, that's sort of ugly let's do let's do this one okay all right okay so three ways to make two three requirements right yeah it's three things you need to make money Okay, so uh, we're going to do these as a bullet point list, because as a numbered list. So I've clicked the number thing right here. So you need a what? You need a product or service to sell. Okay. Okay, two. You need an audience to sell it to. Okay. You need conversion. You need to actually convince somebody to give you the money. Okay. Now, I'm going. For some reason, this particular uh, look isn't doing as well as I would like it to. But we'll stretch that out a little bit, and then can give me your URL. My URL is KenMacArthur.com, K-E-N-M-C-A-R-T-H-U-R.com. Okay, so, uh, so we put the URL right down here, and we may want to even put in something like a line that says to get 42 more tips like this, go to, or some kind of opt-in 
offer there. And so now I've created a picture here. And by the way, let's just go back here and we're going back to design. And hey, if we want it to look like this, we can click there. We can make this. See, so there's lots of different looks that you can use in this to make things work. So you know what? I'm sort of liking this one. It's looking sort of cool. Let's do that. And we'll pull that in, and we'll pull that in there. OK, so now we're done. So now all I have to do is go to File, Save As, and right here where it says PowerPoint Presentation, I'm going to go down and I'm going to save it as, this one actually would work better as a ping, but you can save it either as JPEG or a ping. Let's save it as a JPEG, OK? And I'll just save it like that, boom. And it comes up and it says, do you want to export every slide in the presentation or just this current slide? In this case, I only want the current slide. Boom. I now have a picture that I can upload to Pinterest. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So all I have to do is go into Pinterest. I can upload that. And now I have a thought. And there's, my, there's his URL on there. And that's how easy and quick it can be. Now, you can do other things. You can put in pictures in here. So just by but let me just get to a place where there's some pictures. I'm doing this off the screen. The secret man behind the door. <laughs> yeah, behind the curtain. <laughs> there's way too the many Wizard things going Oz. on in my files. <laughs> and so <laughs> and so let's just say we want to put a, a woman flexing in here. So we're gonna put her down here and we'll bring her down. You know, so you can put in pictures, you can put the text on top of the pictures, you can use all kinds of cool things here to make this work for you. This is one of the easiest ways known to man to create graphics. And by the way, in the future, you can use, well, we'll be talking a little about, a bit about infographics before we're done here, and I'll show you how to do, and you could use that too. So yeah. they're just quick, easy way to do that. How do, what did everybody think about that? Is that a good thing? Is this worth it? That's great. Great tip. Okay. All right. So let's go back now and look at what are what's important to have in this, which is slide. There we go. So what's important is to make them. It doesn't absolutely have to be verti vertically oriented, but Pinterest is vertically oriented and so if notice how this picture gets whoops this picture gets more real estate than mm -hmm. one that is sideways see how this one's sideways this one's yeah. vertical so whenever you whenever you can make them vertical okay now next is make sure you brand them make sure you put a URL on there so that so that they work and you can brand them by putting your logo up on the top or whatever make sure you have a context sensitive header so in other words a good headline about what it is and so in in, in Ken's case what we did is we put part of the thought actually into the title but what we could have done and what I really like to do is online business builder tip number 42 so why do that? Well, the first thing it does is it says there's at least 41 other pictures like this. The second thing is, oh, hey, there's lots of tips. This, guy, this person knows a lot. And so that helps. And so then it becomes a series of tips that you're putting up. And make sure you put in a for more information with a URL in there. So this is a great way to build your business using Pinterest. And it works for no matter what business you've got. If it's a boring, if it's a visually boring business, this works. If it's a business to business, it works. If it, whatever it is, people love tips. They love to repin tips. They love to share them on Facebook, everything. But let's go back for just a moment to the techniques. So what we do is we create, we create the 50 list. Then we turn them into pictures, and then we write a blog post about that tip and include that tip in it, and then we pin the picture from the blog post. Why? Because what that does is that it makes it so that when people click on your pin, they go to your blog post. That's the way you get more traffic from Pinterest. 
So this is a good traffic tip. Now, how do you get sales? Well, one of the things you can do is put your different products up as pictures and, and uh, send people directly to your product page. What I really like to do is that I like to put up opt-in incentives. Mm -hmm. So something to, get, something to get people to want to opt in to my email list, yep. I send to that page, I opt them in, then I use my emails and the thank you page from that to actually sell them stuff. So great way to do it there. All right, so anybody have any questions about Pinterest before I go on? They're all thinking about it. Yeah. So when I ask questions like that, if you have a question, would you just type in why? That way I know I need to wait for you to ask a question. Or you can type in N if you want to if you don't have a question. Okay? Somebody is shy. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't mean why. I meant why for yes. <laughs> so, okay. So, Linda, are we waiting for a question from you? She's probably typing the question right now. Uh, typing. Okay. All right. So we're hanging on here. All right. I'm going to go on and talk about the second. So remember we started this conversation with the question of what are the two most top sites. Okay. I do have a couple of questions. So is there a way to link to the picture in Pinterest to the URL. Absolutely. That's why when you do, when you create, okay, so let me, let me show you this. I'm just going to gamble and I'm going to click on, on this one right here. And what it's going to do, and when I actually click on it, it will hopefully take me to a page on their website that has that. Yes. So here somebody has written a blog post, they put in the picture, and then what they did is they went to this page and they pinned the image from there, which makes it so that the image itself is actually linked to your page in Pinterest. So that's why you do it that way. So uh, by linking, so there's two ways you can do this. You can do it post, so after you post a picture, you can go back into Pinterest and edit your picture, or you can uh, just do it directly from a blog post in the first place. Okay. All right. Uh, do I put it? Do I put it below the picture? You can. Yes. In the words that are below the picture, you can. Uh, you can put in a link there. And for some reason, it's Pinterest is acting up right at this moment. And so, I actually recommend that as you do something in Pinterest that you actually put the URL. See how this URL, there's a URL right there that's bolded? That means that they have written the URL in the text below. Mm -hmm. And so always do that because you'll get 15 to 20% higher click-through rate if you put a URL in the words below the picture. Linda asked, do I make an offer from all my pictures? Absolutely not. If you make an offer from all your pictures, then no one's going to look at any of your pictures. So make, put offers in some of them, not necessarily all of them. All right, let's go on. So I said there are two sites that tend to get more sales than any other sites on the web in terms of social media. Number two is YouTube. Notice Facebook is not in the list. Not only does it give you traffic, it also positions you, it brings in pre-sold individuals, and it improves your search engine rankings. I have a page that has been on I wrote an article on December 27th, 26th, 2009, and it has been on the first page of Google ever since then for about 10 very popular, uh, very popular terms. Mm. And the reason why that is so is that not only, and, and by the way, I'm on the first page of Google for three separate terms three separate pages. So the first one is my blog post where I wrote it. In that blog post there is a video embedded from Google. So the second one that's showing up in, in the first page of Google listings is the video itself from YouTube. And the third one 
is a post that I wrote about it on Quora, Q-U-O-R-A dot com, that referenced that post. All three of those are showing up on the first page. That, uh, that page alone gets me still, four years later, I get between, I get around 100 opt-ins per, per week from that page, still today. And that page brings in sales constantly because people opt in, they go into an autoresponder stream, the autoresponder stream offers them something, and they buy something from that. So very powerful strategy. So what I would like you to do, let's do another action-oriented thing here. What I would like you to do is to take out, you have, did you know that you have probably a high-definition camera within reach of you right now? So what I'd like you to do is to reach in your pocket and pull out your smartphone or reach beside you and pull out your iPad or your tablet and or do you happen to own a computer with a webcam? What we're going to do is we're going to film a video right now. <laughs> okay? So as I said, this is action oriented. I don't want you sitting around getting bored, people. I want you to do something to make some money. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your phone, and I, I hope you know how to take a video on your phone. If you don't, let me just tell you how, how I would do it. Okay, so assuming you have a smartphone that has a video camera, you probably have an icon on your camera that says camera. You click that. And then, when that comes up, you probably have something that has a camera image and a little video image somewhere on your screen. You move it over to the video image. Then, you take and you point the camera at yourself, and you click the little red button, and it's going to start recording you. Now, I'm not asking you to post this video to YouTube because some of you are in your jammies. But what I want you to do is I want you to create a video right now. Or if you don't have your smartphone handy, let's say you got a webcam, and here is what I did. I just took my, my laptop. I stuck it on top of, that's my wallet right down there. I stuck it on top of my wallet, so it slanted a little bit up. I went to the webcam app actually I'm sorry this is my iPad and so I went and I went to video right here and it brings up a little red button right here in the middle I click it and it starts to record actually it's right there click it and it starts to record and so here's what I want you to do to record this video I want you to do three things because we're going to practice this right now because you say, I don't know what to say. Well, here's what you're going to say. <laughs> what you're going to say is, hi, this is Linda Bryan. One of the questions people ask me most frequently about blank, whatever it is that you do, is this. And state the question. Then answer the question. Then end with, for more information on like this, go to my URL and give you your URL. So here's the formula. Number one, introduce yourself. Number two, one of, the, one of the questions I most frequently asked about blank, whatever it is that you do, is then state the question, then answer the question, then end by telling people to go to your website. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. I am going to ask you to do that right now. So, actually, tell you what, I will put the instructions up on the screen. Uh, I just realized that I don't have that up on the screen, so I'm going to add a new slide, and we're going to do layout. Here's this format. So, instructions. Okay, introduce. You, you can start doing this if you don't need these instructions. Uh,
Okay, there you go. Those are your instructions. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to give you four minutes to do this because I, oh, I don't want this to be long. I want this to be 30 to 90 seconds. That's it. Okay, so turn on your webcam, turn on your phone, point it at yourself, and follow this, this formula. Go. <laughs> now you need Jeopardy music. <laughs> How are we doing? I think they're, I think they're doing it. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Ruth just said, now to change out of my PJs and do take two. <laughs> it all depends what you're selling. Uh, yep. Well, the important thing here is that you're not trying to sell anything in this video. You're just yeah, giving exactly. them a tip. Giving you're just answering a question. question. You let your site do the selling, not YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so everybody, what do you think? How this exercise go for you? Now, okay, whew, thanks for taking the time to have us do that. It was very uncomfortable at first. Yeah, guess what? It'll be uncomfortable for the first five videos you do. And so here's what happens with video. Is that video is something that is, has been made scary by a whole bunch of people who have money invested in making it scary. <laughs> they want, people want you to come and pay them thousands of dollars to come in and do a big video shoot. And guess what? You don't need to do that. You can do it entirely with your cell phone. The other day I was, I was talking to somebody and they had just finished doing a $450,000 internal launch that the entire pre-launch sequence of all the marketing for that launch was done from their webcam on her Mac. Mm -hmm. I talked to somebody the other day who just finished a $158,000 launch that he did the whole thing from his Android phone. So you don't need big expensive cameras, big expensive lights, big expensive microphones, though I do suggest that as time goes on, you pick up all those things. What you need is you need to get in a habit of regular creating video. That's what you really need to do. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to follow this set of instructions that I just gave you. Just follow that because you probably have 50 questions that you could easily answer the people ask about your site, your product, all the different things that you can just answer it and then put them all up on a YouTube channel. All a channel is on YouTube is a login. 
and all of them are about that. People will find it, and they're going to start watching your videos. And then you can start embedding those videos into your blog posts, and all of a sudden, you've got yourself a serious business going. Now, there are several things. Some people say, but Don, I don't like having my face on video. I'm going to say, tell you something. Get over it. <laughs> if you could see my face, well, you can see my face. So I'll show you my face. Uh, so right here, in a second, I'll figure out how to get here on the screen. There's my face, and the day I shot that, I had not yet showered. <laughs> so you can see my hair sort of sticking straight up, and that's just me hanging around my office doing that. So, you know what? It really doesn't matter. People aren't looking for you to be a movie star. People are looking for information from you, and you will make far more money putting your face on the screen than you will not putting your face on the screen. Now you can do screencast videos and I do a ton of screencast videos and it's really good but sometimes put your face on the screen. If you go and you look at the top YouTube channels almost none of them don't have their face on the screen. You want to put your face on the screen. Another problem people say is but Don I hate the way I sound. Well guess what? You don't sound the same way in your head as what everyone else hears. What is being recorded on the video is what everyone else hears. Get over it. I'm sorry, but sometimes you just got to gut it up in this world and do things that you may, may not like. And so every time I hear myself presenting, I go, wow, is that really how I sell? Realize that your sinuses are resonance sections. And so it sounds more, it, more resonating to you than what really comes over the video. But guess what? People have been living you with, you with you all your life and listening to that tone of voice. And most of them still love you. <laughs> Exactly. Now, there's an occasional voice that people just can't stand. There is my assistant. There's one person on the Internet who she cannot stand her voice. And it's like, you know what? Oh, well, <laughs> don't pay attention to her then. <laughs> but just go on and just do it easily. So my invitation to you is very simple. I want to invite you to once a week turn on your video camera cell phone, webcam, whatever it is, and teach something your target audience wants to know. And then post it to YouTube, and then write a blog post about that subject, and then embed that video onto your blog. That's all you have to do. Now, if you want to make some serious money, do a hundred of these in the next hundred days. Do one a day for the next three months, and you can start making some serious money when you have a hundred videos. Until you get to a hundred videos, it's rare for someone to make serious money. But once you get to a hundred videos, it can make some huge differences in your life. Hmm. And realize, you know what? If you make a mistake while you're filming the video, turn it off and start over again. <laughs> it's really easy. You don't you 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 don't have to do a lot of editing in video. You can just Hey, I made a mistake. Okay, click the off button, click the on button again, start over. Hi, this is Don Crowther. I'd like to teach you about this, whatever. And off you go. So it's that easy. Make sure you include some kind of opt-in incentive offer in your video. So I said at the end of it, say, send them to your website. But where it's even better is to say, hey, if you'd like to learn how to blank, go here and give them a, a URL to go to so that they can get that, so they can opt into your list and actually get on your list and actually get the information they're looking for. And so while we're on that subject, I'd like to give you a secret linking technique. Did I say it's secret? Because almost nobody's doing this yet. So you may have even heard of this, but if you're not doing it, it's still a secret to you. And that is, did you know that you can now have a clickable link to your website in you, your YouTube videos? So you can actually have, it, it, for many years, we have wanted to have this, and YouTube, about this time last year, started giving this to us. 
giving us the ability to actually put a link to your website, to any page on your website, into your, into your YouTube videos that someone can click on it and go directly there. So now you can say, if you'd like more information on how to waffle your Woomple, go here. And you can have a link show up on the screen that sends them to that URL also. It's a little bit complicated. It's about 13 steps. And so rather than me walking you through those steps and people telling me to slow down, I am going to just give you a URL. So if you would go to doncrowther.com slash YouTube links, that'll give you an opportunity to opt in. Hey, I'm not stupid. And once you opt in, it'll give you a video that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So let's go ahead and I'll put this in the, in the box so that everybody can get this. YouTube links. Okay, so there it is. Please don't go there right now. I would like you to pay attention to what I'm talking about. You can go there and opt in. Just don't pay attention to the thing that comes after it. Pay attention to what, what we're talking. So let's go back to YouTube strategy. So, so I, that's an absolute must that I strongly encourage everyone who is here to do. Okay, so let me show you something else here, which is I strongly encourage you to include an opt-in incentive offer in every video and then make sure in your description that you put up on YouTube, the part where you describe your video, you put a link to your opt-in incentive in that description. And you need to put it in the first three lines of it because YouTube only shows a certain number of, I like to put it right at the start, because then YouTube only shows a certain number of characters underneath the video and you want to have that be there right there in the beginning. Okay? Now, let me show you a uh, even more fun thing. So, have you ever heard of onlinevideocontests.com? So, onlinevideocontests.com is a cool little site where they list a whole bunch of different um, contests that companies and people are running. So here's one where this is a documentary and you can win $52,500. Here is a high school video contest. Students help shine a light on the effects of sleep problems for $1,000. Here is Mothers Against Drug, dr Drunk Driving, Keep Your Family Safe, $7,500. So if you are, get, so you could come in on a number of these and I actually know people who make their living on this site. Hmm. They just come in and every day they spend an hour doing a video for one of these. And their theory is for every 20 videos I submit, I win one. Wow. And, earn, and, and what they do is they simply sort by uh, prizes. So we're going to go for cash. We're going to go for prize amount, and we're going to do judging by a judging panel. Because what you do when you do that is a judging panel means that there's a group of people to judge. It's not a popularity contest. So this site right now has $666,000 worth of video, of video contests on it. They added $88,650 today. There's three trips and there's 50 other prizes. But here by doing this, I've got engineering for you video contest, 25,000, 24,000. So there's some serious money here. So, hey, if you're good at maybe singing cute songs, maybe you've got a really cute kid who can come on there and do something, you may want to go and play with this bit and see if you can get a little profit yourself out of this. Okay, just wanted to show you that, just in case that's interesting to anyone. Hey, what are you doing during the holiday? Make a video, win $25,000. Why not? Okay, any questions about video in this process that we've been in? Because I'm going to go on to something else here. Be fast, folks. Okay, so are you getting good value here? 
Absolutely. I hope everyone here is saying, wow, this is cool stuff. Absolutely. Okay, all right. I'm going to talk about, remember when I told you that I was brainstorming and, and, and just sort of threw down a bunch of ideas of things that were really working? Let me show you something else. And that is, I strongly suggest that you create infographics. So what is an infographic? Well, first off, I want to point out to you that an infographics are way underutilized. You've seen infographics if you spend any time online in the last three years. So they're a graphic that has, basically an infographic is a place where people communicate concepts through graphics. So I'm going to go back to Pinterest. I'm just going to go up here and in the search box I'm going to put an infographic. I cannot spell today. I am so sorry. Okay, here are examples of infographics. So now everyone's going, oh yeah, I know what those are. So here's one on how to look like a pit, uh, hipster. Okay, so you've got to have glasses, horns, here's the kind of shirt, here's the kind of pants. Here's one on the anatomy of sangria. Here's one about Zimbabwe. Here's one about five more Instagram's facts. So Instagram, by the way, is very hot right now. You may want to check that out. Here's good carbs versus bad carbs. All these things are things that can get you huge numbers of links and huge amounts of traffic. Now, Google has recently announced that they're going to change the way that links to infographics um, get put into their algorithm. And what they said was infographics were representing a little bit higher weight than they probably should have had. But think about it this way for just a moment. Even if it doesn't get you right to the top of Google, would it hurt you to have a link to your graphic up on 50 different blogs with people sending you traffic? Hmm, I don't think that would hurt me. And would it hurt for you to get Oh, several thousand visitors in the next couple of days, and then an ongoing 100 to 200 visitors per day for a year or two after that. Probably well, wouldn't hurt too bad. Infographics will do that for you. So you can do infographics in lots and lots of different ways. There is no one formula. If you just look, I mean, it's just lots of different ways to do it. Hey, here we get some in Arabic text. I don't know if that's Farsi or, or what, but okay, this is cool. So lots of different ways of doing them. So the question that people ask me is, how do I get infographics created for me? Well, here's what I would suggest you do. The easiest, fastest way to do it is not the best, but there's this little site. Oops, I'm sorry, I left out a slide. So infographics get pinned, they get posted, and they get reblogged like crazy. So where do you get them? Go to Fiverr.com. So you know about Fiverr.com, I hope. Fiverr.com is a place where people are willing to do things starting at five bucks. And so if, and Fiverr has two R's, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can get all kinds of cool things done here for five bucks or 20 bucks or whatever. And I, I love this site because this is a site where I can find, a lot of people are using Fiverr as an audition site. They go in, they put up an offer, they do one project to someone, and then they want to be able to work for them in the future for a little bit more than five bucks. And so you can get some really, really good designers to do things for you for, hey, five to 20 bucks. And so all you have to do to get there is to go up in the search graph thing and put in and put an infographic, and you've got all these sites. I will create an infographic. So all these different things where people are saying they'll create an infographic for you. And what you usually want to do is you want to go in. What, what many of these will do is they'll give you an infographic for five bucks, and then they've got extras that they can add on to them. This, one, this particular one doesn't, but uh, where you can get like more stuff or whatever from it. Uh, and so you may end up paying 20 bucks to get what you want. So I'll send it the original layer PSD file for another 10 years, 
10 bucks, I'll collect the data for your five points infographic. So they're thinking, of their, this person is going to go, you don't actually have to design it. They'll do that. And I'll submit your infographic at 30 free showcase infographic sites for 40 bucks, those kinds of things. So all these things are possible. It's a great way to get started. Personally, I believe the best way is to figure out how to do it yourself or get a, a person that works for you to figure out how to do this. Uh, and I'm going to give you a couple of tips about infographics right now. The first one is make sure in your infographic, actually within the infographic text, that you put an opt-in offer. So here is an infographic that just comes down. There is nothing that says anything about the site that did it. Why would you do that? Maybe it's right down here in little teeny tiny type. What I like to do is put a great pick about this big opt-in offer to come and get more information about it. And what I actually like to do is put another one over here with something else so that there are two separate info, two separate op, man. Try this again in English. There are two separate ways on the infographic itself that people can use to opt into my list. So then even if someone else posts this to their website, people still have the ability to opt into my list from the infographic itself. That's the first thing. Second thing is whenever you post this to your blog so what you do is you create the infographic or get it created for you then you put it on your blog and make sure you put an embed code to allow people to embed it on their blog too now some people say but I don't want people putting my work on their website well get over it why would you want to, why would you not want free marketing for your website? Where other people are promoting your website on their website. It's called marketing. You want this. So you can put it up on WordPress. If you go into WordPress, so if we go and we search on infographic uh, embed plugin WordPress. And this one right here is the one I use, and you simply install that infographic in better as a plugin, and then anytime you do a web, uh, an infographic, you just check a box, and what it'll and you put in the URL of the infographic itself, and at the end of your post, it actually will put a little line that says embed our infographic on your site, and there's the code, and all I do have to do is cut and paste that and put it on their site and your infographic is embedded on their site. Okay? That's all you have to do is to go, it's free, it's called infographic embedder and you can put that on there and you'll find yourself getting links all over the place that you don't have to do anything to create except create the infographic in the first place. So first tip, put an opt-in offer in your infographic. Second tip, embed put embed code on your site so that other people can put it on their site and make sure you put some 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 copy that encourages people to do it and now three this is where the real magic happens after you create your infographic email your list that says hey I just created this cool infographic that shows you how to do blank it's really cool you ought to come see it and by the way can you, will you do me a favor? Okay, so what I just did is I just went into marketing psychology. There's a piece of marketing psychology called reciprocity, which says when someone does something for you, you want to do something back. This is the reason why when someone comes over and gives you a holiday gift, you feel an obligation to give a holiday gift back, from, back for them. And let me give you a small tip. You may want to just go get several of small, cheap, small gifts and wrap them up and have them in case someone brings a gift by your place. You can say, oh, and I've got something for you too, and go and give it back to them. And so it's reciprocity at work. And so you've just given them something really cool. You've given them this, this infographic. And so at that point, you are then entitled to ask them for a small favor. So you say, here's this cool infographic. May I ask you to do a, me a small favor? Would you please embed this infographic on your site? There's, there's, there's instructions and code to do that on the website. That's all you have to say. But just by asking that one question, 
you will suddenly have a number of people embedding your infographic on their site. And it's very, very cool. Wonderful. Thing. Okay, any other questions about infographic before I go on to my next brainstorm? If you want me to end, I can just end here. <laughs> Don't let him do that, folks. Okay, all right. Okay, so here we go. I am going to give you a key to succeeding on social media. And this is a key that not many people are teaching. And those who are not teaching it are wrong in not teaching this. It's called the take them out technique. I'll tell you this goes directly against what most people who don't understand social media are teaching. So what they teach is hey if you're making an offer on Facebook keep them on Facebook do everything you can to keep them on Facebook that's exactly wrong and I've tested this I know it's wrong so whenever possible you want to get people out of your social media and into your blog or site and a lot of this is mindset oriented a mind and this is a huge mind shift for you so let me just show you here's Facebook here's an art here is something that my friend Nicole put up about her about her little baby and how she was pregnant so she stuck her belly out a little but the reason why I show this is I want you to notice all the distractions there are on this page okay so I've got a whole bunch of things up here that I have to do I have all these things down here that are calling out for me to do it I have oh I can like I can come in I can share here's all these people who have liked it here's 15 more comments and then I get over here to these actions that have been done I've got sponsored things I've got all these sponsored ads that have you noticed they keep changing and so they keep changing on you so they keep drawing your eyes would you want to try to market your stuff in the changing environment like that no you want to pull them off unto your side. So a really good way to do this is to think about, let's just imagine that you were the curator of the medieval art collection at the Louvre. And you were putting together a collection of Raphael. Now, you could put those into other museums. You could put them in the New York Museum of Art, the Chicago Art Institute, the Hermitage. You could go all kinds of different places. But if you get them into the Louvre, you're able to do all kinds of things that you're not able to do. So as they're walking towards the Raphael exhibit, they walk through your halls. They notice the things on the ceiling they notice the other pictures that are going down the hall and then once they finally get there here they are there's your collection and they are there basking in your collection of content about Raphael think about this for just a moment if you do try to do everything on YouTube on Facebook then what you've done is they're controlling the real estate, they're controlling what people do, they're controlling the sales messages that are given to them, and people are trained to pay attention to all those other messages. But if you put them on your site, you control the real estate, you control the opt-in offers, you control the sales message, and you train them to pay attention to you on your site really important that you get this that the real money in social media doesn't happen on social media the real money happens by getting them onto your site so when people say to me Don how do I monetize social media I say give them great stuff on social media that wants that makes them want to go to your site and you monetize them there social media is a place where you get attention and credibility you take them to your site to do the sales yeah that makes a lot of sense and until people get that they will always fail on social media 
Okay? So I hope everybody's gotten this because it's really important. Let's go do one more thing on Facebook, and that is let's talk about promoting key messages. So you need to be creating great messages that send people onto your blog and site. And make sure you include a picture in that because pictures just do so much better. And what I want to do here is show you a technique that you probably have heard about this, but you have not yet done it. And I am going to give you another invitation. I'm big on invitations today. <laughs> so here's a post. 881 people saw this post, people liked it, some people shared it. Right here is a button that says boost post. What I want you to do is I want you to click on that button. So what I'm going to ask you to do right this minute is I'm going to ask you to go to your Facebook page. So I'll wait. Don't worry. I'll wait. Go to your Facebook page, and I'll give you about 30 seconds to get there. Okay, so you're on your Facebook page. Now I want you to scan down your Facebook page, and I want you to find a post that you would like to get more attention to. Boy, my English teacher hated that sentence. I'd like you to find a post that you want people to come to, more people to see. Okay, now go down to the bottom right hand corner of that post. Just for right now, just choose any post. I don't care. Just choose a post. We're not going to actually go through this. I wanted to just show you how it does. And then you go down to this boost post button down the bottom right hand corner and you click on it. And when you click on it, a box is going to come up. And your the budget's going to be it'll be different depending on how many followers you have and everything. So this is the way you promote your post. So you, what, I, what I suggest you do is, for most of you, you check this first one, people who like your page and their friends. Later on, after you tested this a little bit, you can choose people you choose through targeting, and you can do some other targeting. Right here, there's a drop-down button. You can click on that drop-down button, and it'll probably give you anywhere from 5 bucks to 150 or 250 bucks. Okay? And you click on that, and you can choose any one of those dollar levels. Hey, 40 bucks, or let's just say 20 bucks. So choose 20 bucks. And then as you choose that, it'll say, okay, we estimate that this is going to reach for 20 bucks, it may be 33,000 to 5,000 people. Okay? And then you can click on more options and go down and add some, some things like, I only want men, I only want women, I only want people in the United States. I, so there's different targeting options that are there. And then all you have to do is click on Boost Post. And what that will do then, if you've never advertised on, on Facebook before, you'll have to go through this to, through a little thing where you give them your credit card and things like that. What it will do is that will then put your post in front of a whole lot more people than, than you would have gotten otherwise. And I suggest you go and take a couple of these that you of take a couple of posts that you really like, that you'd like to get more people to, to see, and you can only do ones that are recent. You can't do old ones here. And boost post. So my invitation for you is to, within the next 48 hours, boost some post. Pay 20 bucks to 50 bucks and try it and see what happens. What I really like to do is to boost a post that when they click on the off when they click on the link they go to a page that opts them in so that I can capture their email address in that process you don't have to do that you can use it purely for audience building if you want but I suggest and I give you the invitation to do that in the next 48 hours would you be willing to do that anyone who's willing to do that would you type a, a Y in the question box Okay, I got a lot of people saying why, or, and why, 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 why. Okay, very good. And so this is a really good way to get started in Facebook advertising. Now there's some other, a lot of other things, but you know what? Let's start 
by doing this, and then you'll start finding more about it. I would do, Linda asks, is it better to do a few at more money with less frequency or to do it more often to less people for frequency recognition? I, basically what you're doing here is you're going to people who many of them are outside of your reach. And so the more you can do, the better off you'll be. So test it. See what really works for you. Okay, I'm going to give you one more strategy, and then we'll be done here. Is that all right? Sounds great. Okay, and that is I want to invite you to regularly post special opt-in incentives. So my question for you is how many opt-in incentives do you have running on your site right now? My guess is most of you have either zero or one. So an opt-in incentive is something that you're giving people in exchange for opting into your list. Most people have either zero or one. And unfortunately, click here, give me your email address to get more information, is not an opt-in incentive. More information is not an opt-in incentive. What you want to do is give them something specific, like I did for you, where I said, hey, go here, doncrowther.com slash YouTube links, to get instructions on how to put links in your YouTube videos. Okay, that's an opt-in incentive. Now, my suggestion is that you should regularly create and market new opt-in incentives. How's that tired old ebook you've had up on your site for the last three years doing for you these days? I bet you it's not doing very well. So here's the strategy. Offer a new incentive at least once per quarter. So four times in 2014, I invite you to come up with something else that you can offer to your readers and to your Facebook fans, and to your Pinterest fans, and everything else to get them to opt in. Four times. Ideally, 12. Ideally, once per month. You'll come up with something. And by the way, your hard drive already contains probably four or five of these. Things that you've written in the past that you could see easily turn into an opt-in incentive. So, just go through it, find them, and by the way, you can put these things up for a limited time only. You can put them up for only a week or only a month. And it can even be a paid product that you offer for free for a certain amount of time, trying to get more people, trying to get it to go viral with more people sharing it out to people. And you can even involve a contest so that everyone who pins it, everyone who lists on Facebook gets an entry into a contest and to up the ante and get more people to start promoting this. So in other words, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get more people to opt in and to get more people to promote your opt-in to their lists. So you're definitely going to want to promote this heavily both to people who like your page and to their friends using the technique I just showed you. And you're going to want to run other paid promotions for it on Twitter and stumble upon other places. You're going to want to promote it very heavily through your social media, through tips that you create, through facts, through infographics, through videos, blog posts, and re realize that every one of those things I just listed can be an opt-in incentive. So you can have as an opt-in incentive 14 ways to get more traffic to your YouTube videos. That's a tip. Facts. Here are uh, trying to sell social media to your boss. Here are 10 facts that you should present to him. Here's an opt-in to get this infographic. Seven ways to get to the top of Google. Here are five videos that teach you how to do X. That's an opt-in incentive. You can even make blog posts into an, into an opt-in incentive. Collect four or five of them on a certain subject that can still be on your blog, but make it easier for people to make it, be able to access them, and you've got an opt-in incentive. And realize that two of your most important social media properties in the world are your blog and YouTube. So go out there 
and start creating additional opt-in incentives, you can have up, you can have three or more showing on a given page on your blog, and you'll get more opt-ins as a result. Wow. Now, that last comment, and what I just talked about in this last principle, this is one of the things I'm going to be teaching at Ken's upcoming JV Alert. Ken, you want to spend just a moment and remind people about that? Well, you know, thank you so much for all this great information, and, and it's so powerful. <laughs> you know, if you could possibly uh, spend a little bit more time with Don, would, uh, would that be an incredible value for you? Uh, and we've got some special time to be able to uh, spend with Don in person. I'm really, really thrilled about this. Uh, this is kind of a coup for me because I've been following uh, Don and learning from Don for many, many years now. And this is the first opportunity that I've ever had to bring him to a JV Alert live event. I'm excited about that. And you get the chance, if you can get to Philadelphia this weekend, to uh, spend some time with Don, too, and, and to really pick his brain. And, and uh, there are also going to be a, a bunch of other amazing people there. Uh, just incredible folks. Uh, every, everybody uh, that comes to a JV Alert Live is blown away with the quality of the people that come uh, to that event. And, and if, you, um, if you enjoyed uh, spending this time with, um, with Don, then I know you're going to uh, enjoy many, many of the, of the people who are going to be there. It's a family. It's a group of people that are there to support each other. Uh, and we do it for the long term. Actually, uh, one of the people that's helping out in the back of the room went to the very, very first uh, JV Alert live event. So people tend to stick around the family. Uh, you're going to want to uh, uh, stick around with us, too, because it's just a great, a great group of uh, giving people. So, so many people on the, um, on the uh, webcast today have been to JV Alert. I know that many of you will be there with us uh, in Philadelphia. This is the last time that we're doing JV Alert Live in Philadelphia, and there will only be one more JV Alert Live event ever, and that's after a, de a decade of uh, JV Alert, and you definitely um, want to be there if you possibly can. Now, we've got new and exciting stuff coming up. It's not the end of of my life or, or our time together, uh, you'll still be part of the, the amazing Impact family. Uh, but uh, this is a, a special opportunity if you can possibly get there. Then all you need to do is go to jvalertlive.com uh, and uh, sign up, uh, get there. We're also doing a one-day intensive on the Thursday before that. Uh, you can get information on that at onedayintensive.com forward slash Philly. That small group mentoring, uh, some great people going to be there for that, including uh, Charlie Seymour, uh, Richard Weiler's going to be there, uh, and a whole group of other uh, people. But it's a small group, all focused on you, your projects, your ideas. It's a chance that I get to spend with people because, uh, you know, if you come to an event, there are 100 to 150 people at an event. Uh, do the math. I I would love to spend an hour or two hours with every single person there, but the math just doesn't work out. Uh, that's why I do the one-day intensives on the Thursday before my events. So definitely, if you are if you have any interest in that, uh, you can always reach me at ken at jvalert.com and uh, ask me any questions. I'm very, very accessible. I'm looking forward to spending the time with you, Don. Uh, it's going to be an amazing thing. You gave some, gave some incredible content here today, and I know that you've got so much more to share uh, live and in person. So definitely, you know, go to uh, Don's um, URL that's there on the screen, the doncrowther.com forward slash YouTube links. Uh, connect with Don. Stay in contact with him because it will be invaluable to you and your uh, success uh, coming up. So there's a couple more uh, URLs for you too. Thanks okay, so, so let may I may I just share a couple yeah, of things sure. here for just a moment? Okay, so JV Alert. What I will be presenting there is a presentation, a really really cool presentation, where it's called "How to Turn Your Social Media into a List Building Machine," and okay. I'm showing some of the cool techniques that really turn that really 
uh, are doing amazing things to add thousands of people per week to people's social to people's lists, and it's really cool. Um, I also want to bring up something here because I know that some of the people who are on the line here uh, are JV people, and hey, I'm always open to JVs. If you can put 200, 300 people on a, on a webinar, I would be more than happy to do a webinar for your group, and so uh, you can contact me and we can talk about that. And also, um, would love to have you follow me on my blog and on Facebook, and uh, so that I so that we can keep communicating into the future. I hope you all got something good out of this. I would love to have you spend one minute and just tell me what's the one thing that you're going to do differently next week as a result of what you just heard over the last 90 minutes. Well, I can tell you one thing myself, you know, just from uh, my own personal stuff. You know, we focus so much uh, on, uh, on the simple basic things that, that we really need to do on a consistent basis. Uh, it, you can imagine if you were just putting up a single video every single day over the next three months, uh, how much impact that could have. If you, or if you're putting up a single uh, graphic that is on uh, Pinterest or those kinds of things, over time that builds up and builds up and builds up. What we need is the consistency to do it on a regular basis and to make that happen over and over. And it's always a good reminder to me to realize that if you're sitting there expecting customers to show up on your door, uh, you better be uh, giving them ways to find you and, and giving them ways uh, to know that you're out there, that you're credible, that you're doing good things in the world and creating value for uh, people to get to, uh, to what you have to offer. So uh, thank you so much for the reminder of how powerful it is just to do simple little things like your tips uh, to put things out there so that people can reach you and see what you have to offer. Right, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this presentation. As I, as I thought about it this morning, I thought, you know, I could go give a whole bunch of really complex things, but what I think is the, the people who are winning on social media, it, besides the big Fortune 500 companies that are spending hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on social media, the people who are doing it without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars are the people who are just consistently doing this kind of stuff that we talked about today. Yeah, just exactly. consistently putting great content in front of their audience, keeping it simple. Hey, hey I'm going to quote Roots. You just wrote, keep it simple, take daily action. That's exactly right. Just put these kinds of things out there. I hope you found really good value out of this, and I appreciate So, Terry, I want to begin the video tips and grow my list, then on to Pinterest consistently. Ruth, post more videos. Get back on Pinterest. Linda, I'm going to get my videos going soonest now that you've confirmed to keep it simplistic. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And by the way, I do recommend that you uh, don't film live in your jammies unless you really want to. Uh, unless you're selling jammies, right? That's right. <laughs> hey, or some people do it. Uh. <laughs> Terry says, thank you for the value, Don and Ken. And Linda, and that Pinterest is the right direction to keep going. Just revved up this week. Yep. Excellent. Uh, Ian says, great presentation. I found this very beneficial. So. I think we've gone long enough. I really appreciate all of you who have been here, who uh, have taken some extra time to, to sit here and, and listen to us talk. And uh, the, I'll end this by simply saying I encourage you to keep it simple, be consistent, and be constant. And then get going out there and start working to build your business. This is Don Crowther saying just go do this stuff. <laughs> Fantastic, Ken? Don. I really appreciate that. And I'm going to be putting up the recording for this. We'll put it out there on social media. If you enjoyed this video, encourage other people to watch the video. Uh, tell them what great uh, information Don brought to you today uh, so you can share the wealth with other people. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for making me making it possible for me to fulfill my purpose and have an impact in the world. Uh, and thank you for all that you do to spread the good stuff and make the world a better place. Uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Hopefully see you in Philadelphia this weekend. Have a great day, and thank you so much, Don. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.